You see, my business was born because initially I thought, what I thought because of having people cooking uh, chapati in the street, I wanted to provide the dough. And for me was, I wanted to design a B2B business to business model. Mm -hmm. So I would make the dough supply to the people who are making chapati. What is the best way to do it to make sure that I have consistency in the product? It has gone to another level to the point that now we have a full dedicated for school, which we never thought about it. Hi, my name is Antonio Manyagi, CEO of Your Ingredients and founder of Chapati King. Wow, one of the key things I would say is on uh, on the opportunities. One, you have the raw material and that is what the key is. Mm -hmm. So it's how to be able to uh, value add on this one because if you look any part of the the global African continent or even uh, Kenya as a whole, there's always something on how to be able to. People are looking for solutions and they're looking for food. It's becoming convenient, but the people want to healthy product. And also from, if there's anything people, I tell people to learn from COVID and what is happening with the health industry, people are really, really focused on health. So whatever you do, you want to incorporate a healthy component in, in your concept or in your business make it simple as well it's it's one of the key things but the opportunities are quite there in terms of it so what lack is the technology which is also available but the raw material it's available at the moment okay uh the outside market actually is shrinking the african market is growing okay. and the, uh, the reason for this is the people aspiring what is out there to be here so it gives you everyone an opportunity now to whatever it's out there to bring it here and Africa has the biggest population, particularly on the youth, when you look at it, it's the best part. And they, the so-called wannabe or anything, they are looking for this. So you have all the opportunity to be able to do something and create it. Like I said, is you just need to look at it. The market out there is so uh, reduced. We have Africa, the young population, so it gives you that the opportunity. If you can tap into that, you definitely be able to and convenient is now the biggest opportunity at the moment yes what i would say is one of the key people thing how to advance and the simplest way to identify i had um, it's about look at the street people in the if you go to the street or the so-called slum these people are innovative they're able to do things because they are pushed to develop and to do something because of circumstances and they're doing it because the gap they don't know they're doing it just anyhow if you take and you can be able to borrow from that, that tells you it's the best research you can have. It's validated. And that's what most people don't seem to see. By looking at what everybody, because they will be able to do something they sell. They can't keep stock. They're always going to make sure they sell whatever they have. But what they lack is how do we scale that into a large capacity and to have to be able to now distribute. And that's where the key thing. So for me, I'll advise is that is where now you look at the gaps and you can look in terms of people who are doing in smaller scales because they're doing out of necessity. And for necessity, because they know they will sell and they're short term. So to them, they know ah, this is needed, but they're not able to do it in volume or scale it up. So that gives you a gap. Um, You see, my business was born because I was looking to address, and initially I thought, what I thought because of having people cooking uh, chapati in the street, I wanted to provide the dough. And for me was, I wanted to design a B2B business to business model. So I would make the dough supply to the people who are making chapati. But just to realize because of those people, their key thing is profitability. So they will cut corners and all that. So I had to go back to the drawing board and see, oh, this is the challenge. So the key thing is, what is the best way to do it to make sure that I have consistency in the product? And that's why I ended up making the fully uh, cooked chapati ready to eat because I'm able to make sure that the consistency is there. So my focus now ended up to be able to focus on the distribution and how to produce a lot. 
the model we use, one of the key thing and how we, we have like we supply schools. But what we have done, we have somebody now who is commercially specialized in school. We produce his house as a, um, as a franchisee so that as we focus in what we are good at, but we left other. There's somebody else coming in to start doing the supermarket because soon you'll find our product in the supermarket. But it's being distributed through somebody who has an expert in distribution. And as, so the key thing is what we call uh, the other idea is to be able to do contract manufacturing. They will still want to use our brand, but we're able to make anybody's brand. So I can make, if you come to us and say, we want chapati with our name, we'll be able to produce that as well. Wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, like you say, one of the key aspects is, uh, there are two ways to be able to look when you're going into business. You can actually partner with an existing business and you take, because a business, when you look as a whole, you have the marketing, you have the production, the marketing and the sales. But, some people, not everybody's good in all of it. So you can come and propose your services. If you're going to do marketing, you cannot specialize in that. You let them do the production and you do that is one way. The other way is, as you are the one doing the business yourself, partner with people who are expert in doing some of the services. You don't want to do everything by yourself. That one now will make you stand out much better to be able to do it. The other key thing is, uh, to be able to look out, how do you make it work? And you can't do it alone, as I said. One of the key things, you really need to partner with people, whether it's people in the markets, in the lock markets, or whoever doing, but find out people who are specialized, because whoever is specialized know they are better their business than anybody else. And you can focus on yours, for them they will take the product to the market. Uh, business networking is good, and uh, I will say there are two ways. Uh, some of the business networking, unfortunately, what I see in some of which I'm part of, is to them is they're more like, I want my product to go. Yeah. It's not both ways. So you also have to be careful which business uh, you want to go. So for me, uh, it would be good to have uh, a, a business networking, not necessarily in the form of the same business, but in different type of businesses that you can interact with people. Yes, I'm hoping that is going to change, but there's still this sense of self and, um, uh, selfish. Mm -hmm. It's me, not us. Yeah. A business networking should be us. But as much as I've attended to many of them and I've seen it's about me. But if you want to succeed and you want to be, it's about us. Mm -hmm. Because people, when you talk to them, like I talk to some caterers, they say, but I can do it. It's okay. But interesting enough, when they're stuck, we get the first phone call. They still remember. So I don't take it personal because somebody doesn't want to work with me, yeah. but I allow it. But that's where they fail. Because if you're a caterer and you do food, chapati is only one of the items. Yeah. The others you have. But if I can take that headache away, and if you want, I can even customize the, your solution. So it's important to understand what networking means, but it's important, definitely. It makes a lot of sense. It also brings business. So networking is crucial. Well, well, for people. And also like even talking with the people in the media, it helps because it's one of the key thing to be able to see what you can be able to partner and what you can be able to provide. If you are in production, in anything, innovation is fundamental. A lot of people don't realize that uh, innovation and R&D is crucial. There's no way you're going to succeed. You're going to be stagnant. So you have to innovate because for us, and the good thing because of the passionate in innovation, it's been driving the business. So for me, every day I look like now, I'll, uh, we're about to introduce now because of providing a chapati because of the people for Ali Education Institute for children under five, we are introducing fruit chapatis, which is uh, in between, between a pancake and a normal chapati, but based on fruits. The reason is we are looking what people need. And you have to innovate. If you do not innovate and run the R&D, definitely you're not going to succeed. You're going to be stagnant and your business will be surpassed. The reason why innovation is important, there are people who are watching others to see where they're stagnant. And they take what you build and they build on your mistakes or what you're not innovating and they take you out. So it's important to look and have a budget. doesn't matter how small it is. Innovation. Hire somebody, even if you have to partner and discuss how you're going to be able to achieve it. It's important to look at that because innovation is everything in the business. You need to know from whether it's marketing, whether it's uh, in tools, equipment, because we research every day which is the best equipment to reduce our cost but keeping the quality the same. What is the type of grid or all that? So it's really crucial and fundamental. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. but, but it, it's like your name. How do people know you? Yeah. Your brand is your name. It's people need to know. And that is one of the key things. We needed to make sure that for us was, it was branding you have to keep it simple, but also visual. I have seen people come with all kinds of concept from, but it all goes back to simple basic. It's very, very important. Don't keep it a lot long. And I'll recommend at most, in my opinion, the simplicity is the best. Yeah. Simple one or two colors maximum. There are people I've seen with all this. It's you want people to remember. People have a lot of things. Yeah. They just need to remember and make sure. As much as many people come with different ideas or name, because some people will say, "Oh, I want to use this means in Maasai this," but not everybody speaks in Maasai. Mm -hmm. You need to find something that people can remember very easily. And that's for us, Chapati King was very simple. We, uh, we know it's Chapati, but we also need to use as a king. It refers to somebody who commands. So it was easy for us to be able to have somebody to relate. But keep, keeping it simple, it's everything. But branding, you must. And from day one, as you're moving. Because when we were doing R&D, I branded the van and I used to drive it around. And people would wonder, what is it you're doing? I just wanted to get feedback. And I, as I drive around, even the way I branded, I rebranded the car almost, almost 10 times. Mm -hmm. Because whatever I put, uh, people will see the name, but they will, the picture which was there, they will not understand. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I thought, because people thought initially we were doing flour for making chapati. Mm -hmm. So we picked that up. But if we did not go out, we would not have been known. So it's crucial for that. And you need to put out and let people give you feedback. Don't be afraid to share what your brand is because that's what I, I won't keep it a secret until I launch. Yeah. You might be launching the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that one I'll tell you. Physical location come first. No question about it because of credibility. And the reason why I'm saying this is what is happening on social media. You have so many comments. Nobody knows who is who. Nobody knows why it is. You, particularly in the food sector, I'm eating. If you don't know where I am and you cannot come yeah. and I can't tell you where I am to come and see me, then how will I get if I have an issue? So that is the first thing you need to have is you need to have a physical location. Wherever you are making, doesn't matter whether it's a kitchen, tell people I'm doing from my house, this is the address. Then you go to now fully online. But by the time you're going online, also make sure your physical location and where you're doing your production can manage your promises that you give online. Yeah. I have seen people, <laughs> online will kill you or make you. Yeah. And that is why I said, make sure whatever you promise, you keep. So understand, so physical location is definitely the number one thing to have and tell people where you are. Because mm -hmm. I'll give you an example like Chicken Inn and Pizza Inn. They're online and they have the app, but where they are keeping opening location, because it's because of the credibility. Yeah. In food, I want to be able to know. You look at, uh, there's a kibanda which sells maybe the best uh, uh, chapati madondo, but I'll go to that place. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as being online. Yeah. But once you are, people know your physical location mm -hmm. and you're there, they see you, they, they will come for you because we get a lot now, people calling on phone and now we have engaged fully uh, somebody to be dedicated on social media to put everything that we have because now we are ready and people are able to, and we want to showcase and we want to let people know. And social media needs to keep on referring and inviting people. If you're in this neighborhood, please visit us. That is question and all that because I've seen a lot of business. They tell, no, we'll send it to you. And that one removed the trust. Actually, to be honest, no, because it has gone to another level to the point that now we have a full dedicated for school, which we never thought about it. Yeah. Uh, because for us, we want to, initially we were to B2B, we were in the informal sector. Mm -hmm. We are now going to the mainstream yeah. and we keep growing and we are getting people asking us, we need this, we need something, can you do this for us? So we think, and uh, recently we've gone approached by farmers choice and we have developed a product purely for smocha, a chapati purely. For, so we, I never expected there'll be this, mm -hmm. but this comes because of consistency. Mm -hmm. You really need to stay on that. Yeah. Just be, don't change. And one thing is don't be in a hurry. Yeah. If you're in a hurry, you're not gonna make it. 
the reason we are successful today, because people have been seeing other people said, I've been seeing your van going around for the last four years. Yes. Can you now, they, now they know that you're there, mm -hmm. but not just appear once and things go bad, you go down. So you need to understand that it takes time as well. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes, <laughs> I do as well. I got some people who have reached out and is, for me, it's one way of giving back as well. But I also want people to succeed. And particularly, uh, I do business mentorship around a lot of food businesses and uh, in terms, but also I've, some people have attracted, they asked me, can you give us idea on our business, what to do? So to the extent of any business, I look at what they have and the gaps in this because of the experience that I've come across. Yes, we do that. And we have helped a number of businesses to be able to, to do this. And I got recent a call of somebody I've worked uh, in the past. She said, I've expanded, but I got stuck. I don't know what to do. How do I go about it? And one of the key things I help and I try to tell people is to make them understand their business. One thing most people, you'll be shocked. Most people who are doing their business, they don't understand it because they enter into like a side hustle. And there's one thing I hate most in my life, and I'll tell people straight away, your business is not a side hustle. It's a business. <laughs> doesn't matter how small it is, does it, but never, because side hustle is negative. Side hustle, it means you're not putting the effort you need to do because you, you, it has no value. It's just a side hustle. But if it's, you're looking at it as a, as a business, you, you'll ask the right questions, you'll go for it. So those are key, these things is I discuss with people, but one of the key thing I help people to understand what is their core business, because most people forget what is their core business. Because I remember when in Nakuru last time is, I asked somebody, what is your business? I sell water. So I said, okay, how many types of, how many brands of water do you sell? Say, no, no, I have mine. Mm -hmm. So I asked, can you explain? Oh, but I feel you're in the business of purification of water. Mm -hmm. And then hey, people buy, but your core business is purifying the water. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in the business of selling, yeah. that is one component of a business. Yeah. So you're not in the trading like uh, other people, like a supermarket. Supermarket are in trading, they sell everything, yeah. but they don't manufacture. That's what thing. It's important to really understand your core business. Then you know where your strength is and you get to know your weakness. Then when you're on your weakness, you go and look for people to be able to. It's the same thing we found. We found somebody who is very good dealing with schools. And we signed an our franchise agreement with them. So they're taking that market up. We have somebody who is very good in dealing with distribution chain. It's not our business. You take it. But we are core. Our core business is to produce because one of the key thing people really need to understand when you do mentorship is when you understand your business is there's a lot which is at the back end, like procurement. You see, we source ingredients as far as Migori from Meru, literally everywhere. Even some we get from West Pocot because we use different kind of all local ingredients. So that already takes tolls on you. You have to deal with farmers, organization. Sometimes you talk with NGO who are supporting farmers. They ask you, do you have a mic? So you tell them what you need. So you can't be doing everything. And it doesn't matter how good or what money you have, you can't do everything by yourself. So it's important also to look at. So for me, yes, knowing your strength and understanding your business, it's key for me, yeah. Oh, they can definitely reach me out either on phone and or you can link, uh, you can reach out on my LinkedIn profile. I use a lot of people ask why uh, I started a Facebook page, but not yet fully active because most of where I do my work and post is on LinkedIn because it's more professional in terms of work. I'm more specialized in processing, but as food as a whole is where I am, but definitely will share. You can reach us on uh, LinkedIn or through a website as well uh, to be able to organize. And through even a phone call, I don't mind. We're able to do that. Number? My number is 0734-284466. Yeah. LinkedIn is Antonio Manyagi, and the spelling is Magnaki, M-A-G-N-A-G-H-I. Mm -hmm. Yes. Website is euroingredients.net. My parting shot is have faith and know your business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for having me and thank you for visiting.